Welcome to Extended Disc and today's webinar. We want to provide some background for those of you who may not have met us yet. Extended Disc is an international assessment company with operations in almost 50 countries and 250 team members. Extended Disc offers internationally validated assessments that can be tailored to clients' unique needs and preferences. If you'd like to learn more, contact us on our website or follow us along any of our social media outlets. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and all registrants will receive a link to the recording and it will also be posted on our YouTube channel. Use the Q&A section to ask us any questions you may have. If we are unable to answer them during our live session, we'll reach out to all registrants with the response. Thanks for joining us. And now here's the host of today's webinar. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Christina Bowser, and I'm the training director here at Extended Disc. And joining me today is my colleague, Amy Lipinski, senior facilitator. Hi, Amy. Hi, Christina. Looking very festive in your house. I'm always ready for Christmas all year round. <laughs> um, so, it's been a little while, but um, today, the way our webinars, it's a 15 minute webinar, so it will go by in a flash of an eye. Um, we're focusing on how DISC helps you onboard your new employees. Um, just a few kind of logistics is this will be recorded. So if you wanna share it or you need to come back and take a look at it, we'll be sending you the um, YouTube link um, within a day or two. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the Q&A section. So um, I'm just going to let you roll, Amy. Just go ahead and get started. Perfect. So when we think about onboarding, right, we've done that work of recruiting and hiring, but that first impression doesn't stop there. It continues with that onboarding because it's really setting the tone for your new hire's career with your organization. And we want to think about making sure they still agree this was the right decision to join this organization, right? So we want to make sure that we set them up for success right from the get-go, get them starting with a strong foundation. Um, and remember when you're onboarding, getting them to that, yes, this is the right decision helps retain that employee. It is expensive when we think about hiring and recruiting, right? That we want to keep our employees. Um, you know, I don't know the statistics. I know they're out there, but it's like if you don't keep them for like seven years or something, like you lose money on it, right? It's something really crazy like that. So we want to make sure that we set them up from the get go in a very strong foundation. And the last bullet here, show them you, right? Like this is also your opportunity to build that relationship in setting that foundation. So during the hiring process, you know, it might not be the start of the relationship. And so this is now your opportunity to really let them see you, build that rapport, get that foundation, set that stage of communication styles and preferences. And all of that goes into that onboarding. So there's a lot of paperwork and you know, rules and regulations they need to figure out with onboarding as well, but we're not gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about how DISC can help you with that onboarding, which is more around that interpersonal skills, right? The communication and the relationship, the rapport building um, as we go into this topic today. And even, you know, we talk about levels of onboarding, you know, a lot of us in larger companies, we have kind of new employee orientation where we have onboarding and, you know, a lot of times um, companies now are doing a lot on communication as well. But here we're talking about you as the manager using this as a unique opportunity um, to develop, as Amy said, that relationship with you and your new hire, because you know, when we as a new employees think about onboarding, we're like, 
oh yeah, I'm going to have to go through all these sessions. I'm going to fill out all these forms, but it's such a unique opportunity that we don't often get again to really think about using DISC to build that strong relationships to getting them off to a strong start. So when we talk about DISC, um, which is why we're here, how does DISC help? So we're not going to go into what DIS and C are. We're assuming that you know um, you do know you know the DISC styles. Um, we're also talking about you as in your manager role and you're onboarding your new hire. So how does this help? Well, first off, it's a good reminder that we don't all communicate and interact the same way. So it's a good refresher for you to think about your own style. How do you come across as a manager? You know, how do you prefer to communicate? Um, how do your employees and team members tend to see you? And then you get the added bonus when you're using DISC is to have hard data about how your employee prefers to do things. What is their preferred style? How do they prefer to communicate? What are the strengths of their style? Um, and then of course, knowing your own style and knowing your new hire style, where are you similar and where are you different? Um, it's to be kind of proactively able to um, talk about you know how different we are or how similar we are and sometimes the similarities isn't automatically a positive thing sometimes i say amy and i will say um when you have two similar styles together it can actually amplify your styles behavior so not only the strengths of your style but it can actually amplify the challenges of your style so if you're both talkers when you get together you might spend so much time talking you forget to take care of the tasks right um and then of course it gives you the opportunity to take the lead um build the relationship and be proactive think about what adjustments um, in the event of how you email each other or how you sit in on team meetings or how you just work, um, what effective adjustments you could make um, to have better interactions. Because at the end of the day, we know that um, it's all about the team and the, and the people themselves that support the success of an organization. Anything you would add, Amy? You know, the one thing that just comes to mind is I recently worked with a client who mentioned that you know, she was hired because she was different from everybody else on the team. And that the manager took the time to talk about this, right? At what you just explained and talked about. And the power of the tool is right there and recognizing rather than as that I style going, oh my gosh, am I liked because the whole team is all kind of quiet and reserved or very task focused and do they like me? And, you know, rather than being worried about that, recognizing, no, I, they do like me, right? They're task focused and this is why I was hired. So being able to just from that get-go, again, starting right out of the gate, having those conversations with them can be so powerful. Um, and her story contributed to that as well. So this slide just shows us a couple of different pages or images of pages from reports. They're not all in a standard report, but these are just options that Christine and I wanted to show to you. So the first one you're probably familiar with um, in the upper left hand corner there, the disk style, the profile graphs, right? Um, again, this can be a great tool and you can even share with your new hire your own disk profile graph as well. Um, there's also the motivators page, you know, being able to see what genuinely motivates your new employee. Um, and this is going to be based on their natural style, their natural profile. And the image that we're showing you here is those motivators placed onto the diamond, um, the extended disc diamond. So we see really kind of the shaded areas and the words that are going to be motivating to this individual. And then in the white areas on the page, we see words that may be a demotivator for that person, right? They might tend to avoid them because they're not things that come naturally. Um, so again, using that as a way to have conversation. The ideal supervisor in the lower left-hand corner there, this is just an excerpt based on the new employee's natural style. And it tells you what they 
would see or what they value in a supervisor, right? Based on their natural style, what does that ideal look like for them in a supervisor? So again, using that to have conversations with them, right? Um, and kind of comparing that to your own natural style and where do you fit within that? Yeah, and really. A, the, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. At the end of the day, it's not that you have to fit their ideal supervisor. The, the reason why you're reading about their ideal supervisor is to understand the types of adjustments you may need to make as a supervisor. Um, uh, you know, we always say it's not about changing who you are, you know, lead on your strengths, but know that there are times where if you were to make these types of adjustments to better, better match what they perceive as an ideal supervisor, they're going to respond much more positively to you, right? Um, and at the end of the day, you're gonna get what you need um, out of them in terms of productivity in a much more efficient fashion. So like Amy said, these are um, just some highlights of data that you can extrapolate from um, an employee's, you know, taking the extended disk assessment. Now you can incorporate them into a report or you can just go into, you know, your admin account and pull up this type of data. You don't have to run a report. Um, also, you don't necessarily have to share all this data with the actual employee themselves. So um, there is, it's just a reminder, there's a wealth of information that you can generate based on their disk results. Um, I just wanted to share with you um, just what do we go, where do we go from here, right? So you kind of know what to do as a manager. You know, you're like, you see the value of DISC, you know, it's a good reminder of what your style is and it's good insight into the style of your new hire. But now what, you know, I mean, um, it's one thing to give them, you know, to use the candidates report to help you make these decisions in hiring. Um, it's also one thing to generate a development report which helps the employee be um, more aware and be able to have those opportunities to develop themselves. But one thing that I say, Amy and I say, that gets overlooked the most is use the work pair report. And a lot of people are like, what work pair report? Um, the work pair report is a simple report generated on your existing um, DISC results. So you never have to um, retake um, a DISC questionnaire to generate a work pair report or a team report. Um, but it really is to help you focus on that, um, being able to kind of connect and build rapport with your new hire. Um, it is, I, what we say about the team report and the work pair report is they are opportunities to dialogue. They give you talking points um, and, and data to, to talk about. So this example on this page here is straight out of a sample um, work pair. And it is um, Suzanne and Andy. And you can see this is talking about what motivates them, what, you know, it describes what typically motivates them. And it's a good way to kind of understand what might motivate one person like Suzanne may actually have the opposite effect on Andy. So like if Suzanne were someone who likes to move really fast and get things done, and Andy's the opposite. Andy wants to process and ponder and, you know, check the data. Um, so one, you know, for one motivating thing might actually have the opposite effect on the other and vice versa. So it's just a reminder to us. Um, there's also the team report, um, which focuses on team dynamics. So I always suggest as a manager, again, every time you have a new employee come in, rerun the team report or just rerun some of the team map data. It just gives you a visual picture of how your, um, your team as a whole, you know, how do they show up? Are they more reserved? Are they going to be more active? Do you have anybody that kind of sits in their own space in terms of their disc style that's less similar than the rest? At the end of the day, these, these types of reports are not going to answer questions per se, but they're going to give you opportunities to talk about what are your strengths coming into your role, what are some of the challenges you might have to be aware of, and then how you will tend to interact with each other, your dynamics. Um, anything you would add, Amy? Just what comes to mind is I oftentimes think of it as a bridge to communication, a bridge to these dialogue conversations, right? Because 
it just gives us this data to look at. And it almost gives us a confidence to approach that conversation with the person and say, you know, I was looking at our work pair and I noticed that our motivators are different and I'm needing something in this situation different than maybe what might motivate you right now, right? It gives us this kind of just opportunity to bridge and approach those conversations. So like Christina mentioned, they're oftentimes overlooked, but valuable resources. So hopefully we just gave you kind of a quick kind of little energetic push to thinking about how DISC can be used. And, and th this is not the only way. We're just showing you some of the ways that, you know, clients have used them in the past. Um, but I suggest you think about how DISC would fit into your orientation program, whether it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis or whether it's part of your new, um, or, uh, new employee orientation. So thank you for joining us today. As I said, 15 minutes just flies by. We do have one more 2021 webinar coming up, and that is the um, part of our four steps to effective interaction webinar series. Um, it's step four. So we have gone through full circle. Why do I have to adjust my style? Um, if you missed any of them before, don't worry. We always recycle them. So starting January, we'll start with step one. So thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions, um, reach out to us at info at extendeddisc.org or um, check our website. Thank you and have a happy, happy holiday. Season greetings from all of us at Extended Disc.